Hello, you're welcome to another exciting edition of this Bible study program. My name is Osamagbe Leslie Egareva, and I'm a gospel preacher in the Church of Christ. Um, today, I would be discussing with us um, Psalm chapter 51, verse 5. We want to see uh, what it says with regards to the concept that babies are actually born sinners. In other words, like babies inherit these sins of their parents. Um, it's, it's a common concept in uh, the denominational world. Um, it, it's, it's the Calvinist that, you know, I would say mostly propagate this, the total depravity, total hereditary uh, depravity concept. So they, they teach that babies are actually uh, born sinners and they inherit the sins from their parents when they are born. So there are lots of passages that they sometimes use to propagate this false idea. But one of them, one very popular passage that is being used is Psalm chapter 51 verse 5. So very briefly, we're not going to take time. We want to look at that passage and see if it's actually saying what, you know, they are wanting it to say. All right, in Psalm chapter 51, verse 5, it says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Now, this text, as like I said, you know, people read it, and what they are reading is that, oh, when you give birth to a child, the child is all this, is inheriting your sins and automatically becomes a sinner because you, the mother, uh, you know, is a sinner. So um, basically, let us see. The argument, like I said, is that, you know, Psalm 51, Calvinists use it to teach that babies inherit sins from their parents. But the truth is the phrase, in sin did my mother conceive me, does not mean that baby, the baby was a sinner. I think David was the one talking there. So the, the passage is, David is not saying that, oh, when my mother gave birth to me, I was a sinner. That's not what he's saying. Now, I'll give us a parallel example. And by way of answering the arguments, I'll give us a parallel example, and then we'll see, and then we'll answer the question and see if what they are saying makes some sense. Now, suppose I say, look at this example. In anger, did my mother slap me? <laughs> you see this the, the parallel? In anger, did my mother slap me? Now, who was angry? Was it my mother or was it me? Remember, in sin, did my mother conceive me? In anger, did my mother slap me? Of course, my mother was the one that was angry, not me. So in this example, it has nothing to do with me. I wasn't even angry, but the one who was angry was the one who did the slapping. So when David said, in sin did my mother conceive me, he's not saying that he was a sinner at the point of the conception. Just like I am not saying that I was angry at the point that my mother slapped me in anger. Obviously, my mom was angry and not me. So the statement in sin did my mother conceive me would not prove that the baby was in sin. So that's one thing we need to get from there. I guess that parallel example makes some sense and you know answers the argument. However, we need to understand the nature of sin. Sin is committed and it's not inherited. It's not a property <laughs> that you inherit. Uh, and I'm going to show this very, very... Um, uh, clearly in the scriptures that sin is committed and it's not inherited. The first passage I will turn to is 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. And that passage, the Bible says, Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. You see, so sin is the transgression of the law. A child that is conceived, I don't know the law of such child has actually, you know, transgressed for you to actually then pass over 
the sins of the parents on such child. And that's why people baptize babies today, because they think that, oh, everyone is a sinner. Man by nature is a sinner. You know, when, when you when you have a newborn baby and all of that, they, you know, they say, oh, let's baptize the baby so that the sins can be washed away. But the truth is, except you commit sin, that's what this passage is saying, then you have not actually said to be, you know, you cannot be said to be having sins in you or a sinner, you know. So you have to commit sin to be a sinner. You have to transgress the law. That's what the Bible teaches. Now, little children have no knowledge of good and evil. Basically, there's a passage in the, in the Old Testament I want to make reference to in Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 34 uh, to 39, if you read that. Now, the Israelites could not enter the promised land because of sin. God was specific that they sinned and they would not enter and all of that. But there was a statement that was made about their children such that their children could actually enter the promised land. Now, let's read verse 39. It says, moreover, your little ones and your children, who you say will be victims, who today have no knowledge of good and evil. The children is said to have no knowledge of good and evil. The Bible says they shall go in there, referring to the promised land, to them I would give it and they shall possess it. So basically, um, you know, first of all, Psalms is not teaching or, you know, that, you know, children are sinners or they inherited the parents' sins like we have seen. So uh, that's what we have basically seen. Psalm 51 verse 5 does not teach that the children inherit sin or are born with sin. Uh, so in the whole of the scriptures, you can't find any scripture to prove that, you know, children inherited sins from their parents that would necessitate them to, you know, have to be baptized. Of course, you can't be baptized as a baby because the Bible says for you to be baptized, you have to believe. You believe and is baptized shall be saved. So if a baby cannot believe, such is not a candidate for baptism. Again, I would like to wrap up by telling us that the plan of salvation is available for everyone if you're watching this, you have not been saved, you have not been baptized. Salvation is not placing your hand on your radio and repeating a prayer after the man of God. It's not saying some form of words and say, oh, now I'm a sinner or the sinner's prayer and then you are saved. For you to be saved, you have to hear the word of God. The good news about Jesus Christ, you have to believe that Jesus Christ died and arose and he is actually the savior uh, of the world. He saved us from our sins and is the son of God. You have to repent of your sins, determine to follow Christ instead of sin, and then you have to confess your faith in Christ, that Jesus Christ is the son of God, and then you have to be baptized into Christ in order for your sins to be forgiven. So these are the things you need to do. You can visit the church of Christ nearest to you uh, for, you know, questions answers and then you can drop your questions also in the comment box if you need to get baptized uh you know you can reach out to the church of christ close to you and they will be willing to assist you uh my name remains osamag with leslie agariva and you can visit my website www.unmaskingsophistry.com thank you very much for listening so we'll meet again uh remain blessed